Yes, thank you. All right, good evening. Good to see everyone this evening. Um, well, I wanted to get, get an opportunity to share our equity journey with you since we'll be looking at the uh, first reading of our equity policy this evening. So next slide, please. In Vancouver Public Schools, student equity is serving every student by meeting their unique needs and treating them fairly, ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to experience success, providing students with safe and accepting schools, giving students the tools they need to thrive and work in a diverse world, teaching students to treat each other well, growing their self-esteem, and fostering their critical thinking skills. Next slide. So this is our timeline, and this is the timeline that we've used this year, but I want to spend a little bit of time talking about our journey and how we got here. Next slide. So we define equity as a condition that balances two dimensions, fairness and inclusion. As a function of fairness, equity implies ensuring people have what they need to participate in school life and to reach their full potential. We want students to flourish in our system. As a function of inclusion, equity ensures that essential educational programs, services, activities, and technologies are accessible to all. Our board is committed to ensuring that all of our students experience equity and access at high levels in our schools. In October 2020, uh, our board of directors unanimously approved a resolution condemning racism and establishing policies and directives on diversity, equity, inclusion, and excellence in education. And this was resolution 869. This resolution outlines the board's commitment and has informed our work thus far. This commitment includes items such as establishing an equity advisory committee, conducting a third party equity audit and developing an equity policy and procedures. And our historical data shows that all of our students have not traditionally accessed our system, but this equity policy allows us to put some things in place to help support that. All right, next slide. So in VPS, we serve over 20,000 diverse students. 49% of our students qualify for free and reduced lunch. 14% have special needs. 54% of our students are white. 28% are Latino. 9% are multiracial. 3% are Asian. 2.5% are Hawaiian and Pacific Islander or Pacific Islander. 3% Black or African American. And 1% of our students are Native American or Indigenous. Our students speak multiple languages at home. You can find our students speaking Spanish, Russian, Chukis, uh, Vietnamese, Filipino, just to name a few. We have quite a few languages. So while VPS is very diverse in student, rep student representation, our students unfortunately are not experiencing inclusion and belonging in the way that our board would like and that our community uh, deserves. Thus the equity work. Uh, next slide, please. So let me explain a little more about when I say that our students aren't experiencing inclusion and belonging. This slide shows our student proficiency rates in English language arts and math during the 2018 and 19 school years. And this is pre-pandemic data. The data shows that our students of color are achieving at disproportionate rates lower than their white counterparts. In English language arts, you see here that 28% of our native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander students met proficiency rates, as opposed to the 62% of our white students. 33% of black students, 37% of our Latino students, 44% of our American Indian students, and 54% of our multiracial uh, students met proficiency rates. We did have our um, category of color, students of color who are Asian, who were six, at 68%. And this is data according to our smarter balance. We see a similar trend in math, disproportionate rates. 17% of our native Hawaiian students uh, were proficient in math, 25% of our black students, 
26% of our Latino students, 34 American Indian, 43% multiracial, 65% of our Asian students and 51% of our white students were proficient in math. Uh, next slide. This next slide just gives one additional piece of information um, that supports the need for the equity work. And this is our historical discipline data. You see here, we have disproportionate rates in 2018 and 19. So six, according to this data, 6% of our white students experienced exclusionary discipline, while rates for students of color or students with disabilities were higher. You see there's a, um, the graph grows. So you'll see the 8% of our American Indian, 8% of our Latino students, 10% multiracial, 12% of our Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander students, 15% of our Black students, and 14% of our students with special needs experience exclusionary discipline um, in our system. And this is um, an indication of uh, inclusion and belonging, or the lack thereof. Uh, next slide, please. To help us determine the root causes and potential solutions, we underwent a third-party equity audit, a discipline audit, and we sought to engage our stakeholders. We worked in collaboration with the UCLA Center for Civil Rights Remedies and our Discipline Equity Steering Committee to implement strategies that would help us develop into a more culturally responsive system where our student success is not predicted by their cultural identity. We engage stakeholders by conducting surveys, listening sessions, and focus groups. And in 2000, excuse me, August of 2020, we formed our Equity Advisory Committee as well as our Equity Review Team. Our Equity Advisory Committee um, has approximately 15 individuals, and their work is to inform uh, the superintendent and provide insight. Uh, to help our district address implicit bias and institutional racism. Next slide, please. As a result of the audit, the five following recommendations were made. Um, recommendations around um, uh, creating a culture uh, of equity. Uh, this includes creating opportunities for equitable student access, participation in high quality programming, developing an understanding of equity across our system and training our staff to better understand how they can most effectively meet the needs of each student in their classroom. As we look at our system, the recommendation um, uh, to build our internal capacity was number two. We're doing this by engaging our staff in conversations and professional learning opportunities that increase their understanding of the student experience, as well as developing practices that respond to disparities in student success. Recommendation around resources includes looking at our funding models and providing additional resources in higher need settings to increase success for our students of color, our students with disabilities, our multilingual learners, and our students living in poverty. This also includes providing our building leaders with more autonomy around how they allocate resources to provide supports for students. As we focus on recommendations around our stakeholders, the recommendation was to plan for change by engaging our stakeholders. This includes ensuring that full and equitable participation in decision-making and planning um, is available for them for next steps. Our last recommendation was around identifying our goals. And this is where the equity policy and procedures uh, come into play. Next slide. Okay. These goals will help us to ensure that each student develops the knowledge and skills they need to engage and become, and become productive members of our society. As you review the policy tonight, please keep in mind that our policy helps us to set parameters for decision making, but leaves some room for flexibility, while our procedures, which we'll finalize in the spring, help us to understand the how of the work. It'll, it will provide step-by-step -step instructions on, and specific ways on how we can incorporate equity within our system. Our goals um, in our procedures, uh, 
are around our uh, student learning, culture and climate, resources, curriculum, um, incorporating an equity lens in our system, and uh, developing our professional staff. Uh, next slide, please. This is uh, looking back at our timeline, and this, this is our timeline for this year, okay? And this is how, what we uh, did to develop our policy. So we know that it is extremely important to our board that uh, this policy reflects our community. And for this reason, we have had multiple checkpoints in place for our community to weigh in. Our equity advisory committee, as well as our discipline equity steering committee had opportunities to review and provide feedback for the proposed policy. District leaders, faculty and staff, along with additional internal and external stakeholders all had opportunities. Uh, there were town halls and listening sessions as well as online surveys that were made available. Next slide, please. As we look at our next steps uh, for this work, um, we're going to uh, be working on providing a, uh, a equity procedures. And this is going to be the roadmap that we use. Uh, this is going to be where our accountability lies, um, the accountability to our students and stakeholders. And again, our goal is to make uh, this procedure available in the spring. I want to just thank you all for uh, our, and our board and our community uh, for our commitment, their commitment to our students and um, this and the importance of this and understanding, excuse me, and recognizing the importance of this equity work. 